I mean, children are interesting for me because the work is engaged with education and development. And everyone is always developing, but in a child you see the development very rapidly and you can measure it chronologically easily because the development is so sped up. It's almost like a child is a microcosm of the perfect spectator-spectacle relationship. So when a, a child comes to a museum or a gallery, they're honest, aren't they? And they don't have all the um, baggage, cultural baggage that adults have. And they, they're not intimidated by being wrong or um, saying things that might seem crazy. And uh, not intimidated by the elitism of the art world or their lack of knowledge of art history. And they just say the first thing that comes into their mind. And the first thing that comes into their mind is usually exactly the right thing. You know, it's the most riveting response, because it's honest. You imagine society where everyone had the, the boundaries or the lack of boundaries as children. It'd be quite interesting. It'd be like uh, a world full of people with Asperger's just the honesty, yeah, it'd be too much. Um, you know, a lot of people say that humour is based on a, 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 the amount of time between the delivery and the realisation of truth. So that's what most humour is, it's just the, the space between the delivery of the honest, of honesty and the understanding of honesty. And I think that's, that's what children do as well, but they do it accidentally because they're in that space where adults construct humour or that space that equates to humour. Children use that space to understand and that's why it's always, the response of a child is always riveting, I think. I think I'm just going to have to keep having children because they'll grow up and leave, and then I won't have any material or intellectual help. <laughs> yeah, because they're the biggest source. Yeah, they are.